All right. Um, well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, welcome to the Wayne Ambassadors <laughs> coffee chat. Um, we have like a huge, huge panel here of med students to answer all your questions. Um, so a little bit about the session. It's very informal. So if at any point you think of a question, just raise your hand with the, the Zoom chat function and we will call it. Uh, we will call on you and answer your question. Um, other than that, you can use the chat um, to throw your questions in there. And if there's any pauses, we have a list of um, some presenting questions by you guys. So I guess we'll just start off with um, <clears throat> some introductions. My name is Nico. Um, I'm a M2 here at Wayne. I went to undergrad at uh, the University of Michigan. Um, some things I'm involved in on campus are the cardiothoracic surgery interest group, obviously the Wayne Ambassadors. I'm part of the um, FIDE medical fraternity um, and the Detroit downtown boxing gym service learning program. Um, and I chose Wayne because in undergrad I did, sir, or I did volunteering at the Detroit downtown boxing gym and um, I just kind of fell in love with the city. I fell in love with the the kids that I was working with. And I, it was something that I saw as an opportunity to continue on into my medical school years. And I have. Um, so Nick, you can go ahead. Hi, uh, I'm Nick or Nicholas. I'm also an M2 here at Wayne. I went to Notre Dame for my undergrad. Um, here at Wayne, I'm involved in the medical ethics interest group as one of the co-coordinators. I also am doing MD Ambassadors, obviously. And then I'm also doing research with an um, emergency medicine doc at Mount Sinai and Detroit Receiving. And I chose Wayne State primarily because I really value community among like pretty much all other things. It was something that was super important to me in undergrad and among all the medical schools that I applied to, Wayne seemed to emphasize a collaborative and just kind of like non-toxic community um, among the medical students and it's something that really holds true um, once once you get here and that's something that's been extremely valuable to me too so that's why i chose to come here okay hey everyone my name is aria um i am also an m2 like nick and nico um i went to the university of michigan uh, for undergrad and a few of the things I'm involved in here at Wayne is uh, student senate and I'm also in the cardiothoracic surgery interest group with Nico. Um, we do that together and I am also part a, of a mentoring program called METAL that we're working with Wayne students and undergrads and also a few high schoolers in the Detroit local area. Um, the reason I chose Wayne is primarily because I've been a long time resident of Michigan um, and I love Detroit along with what Nick said and I've been a part or around uh, the suburbs of Detroit pretty much all my life. And I've wanted to kind of continue that medical education, like I continued my undergrad education somewhere in state. So yeah, and a lot of great opportunities for mentoring and uh, um, urban uh, experiences here. So that's why another reason why I wanted to stay here. Hey guys, my name's Katie, uh, I'm an M1. I was uh, born and raised in California. I went to UCSD for my undergrad. Um, I came straight through to Wayne with no gap year, so I'm happy to answer questions about that. Um, as far as what I'm involved in, I'm an ambassador. I'm also in the research elective um, and the emergency medical um, interest group. I chose Wayne, much like the rest of us, for a lot of community service-based um, involvement and uh, just the community. Hi, everyone. My name is Lefteri. I'm also an M2. I did my undergrad at Ohio State. Uh, I'm from Illinois initially, and um, aside from MD Ambassadors, I'm involved in um, learning coaching for clinical skills. I'm on the AMA executive board, and I'm also involved in orthopedic surgery research at Henry Ford. And one of the reasons that I picked uh, Wayne, um, a lot of people already hit on the main reasons, but um, being out of state, uh, and when I was talking to people as I was applying to medical school, anytime I brought up the name like Wayne as something that was on my list of schools, uh, people were like, oh, you know, they got a great reputation. And that was people in healthcare um, who weren't even in Michigan or really from Michigan. So that was part of the reason, um, in addition to all the other ones that everybody else has mentioned. 
Hi, my name is Neha. Um, I'm an M1 at Wayne. I went to undergrad at the University of Michigan. Um, so I'm involved in the Medical Education Research Elective, uh, the Warrior MD Ambassadors course, and then um, also trying to become an HIV tester and counselor um, through one of the clinics here. And I picked Wayne State because um, I've lived in Michigan my whole life. I live like 30 minutes away in Northville. So I've always kind of heard of Wayne. And my mom was an alumni of the engineering school. But what really like struck me was during my interviews, meeting the students and the faculty and seeing how involved they were in Detroit. Um, so yeah. Hey guys, um, my name's Connor. Um, I graduated from University of Michigan in 2021. Um, some things I'm involved with right now, um, I'm in the ophthalmology interest group, um, and I'm just starting up the research elective as well. So I'll be involved in an ophthalmology lab. Um, I volunteer at a few clinics, um, and one is called the CAS Clinic, and they're local. They're really fun. Um, I'm also starting HIV testing training, uh, like Neha, and um, there are a lot of reasons that I chose Wayne, but I think one of the biggest ones is that it has a really large class size, which means that, you know, you have a really diverse group of students and no matter what, you'll find a group that you fit in with, with similar interests. Um, so it's a really big plus. All right, hi, hi guys, um, my name's Jack. Um, I'm an M2 at Wayne. I also did my undergrad at Notre Dame like Nick. Um, besides MD Ambassadors here at Wayne, um, I'm a member of the Infectious Disease Interest Group. I do a couple of uh, undergrad mentoring programs, and I'm also involved in like the learning coach and peer mentor programs here uh, within the students at Wayne. Um, I'm in the community engagement elective, and then I also do research at Henry Ford, which is why I have the nice get up right now. I wish I could be a little bit more dressed down, but, um, and then I chose Wayne because I'm also from the Metro Detroit area. So it was really when it, it was nice to come home and be part of like a medical school that like served the local community. But I really like how Wayne makes an extended effort to actually like partner with organizations in Detroit and clinics in Detroit to serve the, the citizens like of Detroit. That was a big plus for me and something that really drew me to the school. Hi, um, I'm Mai. I'm an M1 here. I am from Texas, born and raised, and so I went to UT Austin undergrad. Um, and I am involved in the business and medicine elective, uh, hopefully to get involved with the MB, MD, MBA program. Um, and why I chose Wayne was its um, diversity, first of all. I was really drawn to that and it being in the heart of a really urban and diverse city like Detroit. I, coming from Texas, that was something that I hadn't seen in a while, um, but something that I really desired in a, in a med school and to practice somewhere similar. Um, and I love Wayne's uh, focus on community and like building community and how that's one of Wayne's like focal points is the community of Detroit and serving the, the people of Detroit as well as the school, so. All right, thanks everyone. Um, so I guess we'll just open the floor to whoever has a question. If you just wanna raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask a question, you can go ahead. Um, I guess I can get it started from one of the um, questions from, oh, all right, Elaine or Elian. <laughs> Hi, Alon. <laughs> Alon, sorry. Yeah. No, no worries. I get it all the time. Thank you all so much for, for putting this on. Uh, my question uh, has to do with the curriculum. I was, I was curious how the clinical application and sort of integrating that within the um, academic learning, how that sort of plays out at Wayne State. So do you mean like clinical um, learning during your preclinical years or like your clinical rotations? Uh, yes, during the preclinical years. Okay. Um, so I guess I can go ahead and try to answer this. So your clinical uh, learning is all through standardized patients during your first couple of years. Um, so at least during your first year, you do this thing called clinical skills, um, which is in one of the main academic buildings. And you have these volunteers um, from the community that are 
essentially like actor patients. Um, and you will go in and you learn how to take like a patient history and do physical exams for each of the body systems that you're um, learning at that point. So I found it really helpful to like learn the maneuvers and it helps like reinforce the learning of like the lectures and like the didactic learning. Um, in your second year, you do this thing called clinical experiential clerkship where you're actually uh, you'll do like a once every two week rotation at like an outpatient clinic. So through there, it's kind of, um, you know, what you put in is what you get out. So you can go and see patients on, like on your own. Um, you see patients with the residents that you're rotating with, the, the third year medical students, and even the, your attending. Um, you practice your um, oral presentations to them, and you can even practice note writing. That's just kind of like a overall like internal medicine like step into the world, but hopefully that answered your question. Yes, thank you so much, Nicholas. <laughs> I do want to add one thing too is uh with the you know the amount of free clinics that we have and clinics that we have at Wayne, we have a rather extensive group of clinics, whether it be the student run free clinic or um, CAS clinic. I mean, if you can look it up on a student organization page, and you can just see. That is like another great way to get involved in like clinical experiences as an M1. I know that's something that a lot of other programs might not have, but you can basically like be a part of the whole decision-making process, taking vitals and a lot of the things that you would probably do while you're actually on rotations, starting off in like the first couple of weeks of, M uh, of you know, your first year, which is another really, really great way to kind of reinforce the clinical skills that you kind of build in the more, you know, formal setting of like what Nico said at Cato clinical skills. With standardized patients but you're never going to really replicate it unless you're out in the real world and those clinics that we have as run by students are a great great way to kind of practice and reinforce that kind of stuff so i wanted to say that as well thank Just you kind of piggybacking yeah. off that as well um you're like always supervised at the free clinic so it's not i mean like it's the student run free clinic as an example one of them but it doesn't just mean that there's only students running around you know taking blood pressures and prescribing medications obviously but um i found that it's been an extremely useful learning opportunity to interact with attendings and people from like other healthcare fields like dentists at the multi clinic they have like three different specialties that all work together in the same building so you just get to be part of a clinical team like Ari was saying um all well learning new exam maneuvers and just being able to practice the stuff that you're learning in class and at Cato so yeah free clinics are definitely a great place to do all that thank you Nicole all right thanks everyone um bailey you can go ahead hi can you hear me okay yeah okay so i actually just came from class so this topic has been on my mind so i do have one question about the curriculum and then also about life in detroit i was wondering if uh, the wayne state curriculum had any uh gender and sex-based curriculum uh, that's what my class just was. So I was just wondering if that's integrated at all. And also for like life in Detroit, um, how do you guys like find like living situations? Are you primarily in like student areas or I'm Canadian, so I don't really know how it works for you guys, but um, how, like, where do you live? Do you live closer to the schools or the hospitals or whatnot? <clears throat> all right, we can open this one up to the panel. Uh, I, I can give a little bit insight into the gender and sex based part of like incorporating in, in curriculum. Um, so I know that the IJI, which is a subcommittee on student senate, they're called the Institutional Justice and Inclusion Committee. They are actually working with curriculum directors and course directors to kind of help develop a, you know, a gender and sex based curriculum or kind of integrating a little bit more about transgender health and other kind of, um, you know, chronic illnesses that other LGBTQ populations might be facing. So that's something that's currently in, you know, the, the, I guess, like the workshop in terms of how we can effectively incorporate that into the curriculum. Um, I don't know when exactly that's going to be deployed. Um, I'd have to, you know, talk to the actual cur curriculum directors about that, but it is in the works. And that's something that we definitely are working on, not only from students, but faculty are also collaborating on this effort to make sure that we have a more comprehensive understanding of that. So hopefully that answers that question. It does, thank you. I can speak a little bit on the housing. Um, I also am not from Michigan, so 
housing coming in was a, a big concern for me. Um, ultimately, there's the answer is you can do kind of whatever you want. Um, a lot of students live in a couple of the apartment complexes near campus. I'm personally like a 10 minute walk. Um, I know a lot of M1s are as well. There's also some people that live in like townhomes nearby, um, kind of ranges from like driving to walking distance. It just kind of depends on what you want to do. Um, and then once you get sort of closer to like the onboarding and stuff, there's a lot of really great resources that the students, like the upperclassmen and stuff will put out with lists of like apartments and like pros and cons and like their distances and stuff like from uh, the campus, as well as like the hospitals for like your clinical years and stuff like that. So there's kind of a range, but a lot of that information is um, like on the Facebook page and things like that, that get a little bit closer. On top of that too, um, like if, I don't know how close you are, I guess, to Detroit, but the, like if you wanted to live further away, um, I do know a lot of people that uh, like live around 30 minutes away and commute in for class. Um, I yeah, think I'm in Toronto, years, so. Okay, so, so like <laughs> be a pretty long commute. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, if if you wanted to look for like cheaper options, like outside of Detroit, that's another option too. Thank you. All right. Um, hopefully we got all of your questions. Um, but uh, so Hannah, you can go ahead. Um, yeah, so my question was kind of similar to the previous question asked. Um, it was more so about how Detroit is an urban um, center. So are there like different urban amenities, like besides like housing where you have to walk to class, but like you can walk to like different grocery stores? Is it like, or do you need a car to really get around the city? And then like public transit, is it readily available or there's just some things where you'd like need a car to get to? Thanks, Hannah. Uh, we can open up to the panel. I can kind of start it off. Um, so I guess it depends on where you live. If you're living in like the midtown downtown area of Detroit, um, there are there is access to like certain amenities that you need. There's like the main grocery store that's around is like a Whole Foods, but if you live down closer to like the downtown area they just opened up a new Meyer, so that's like another grocery store that's available so I'm like up in Midtown so it's about a mile mile and a half so not quite walkable but kind of depending on where you live it could be um as for public transport that's one thing I think Detroit is definitely lacking in they have this thing called the Q line that kind of runs up and down Woodward um for a couple miles but if you want to go anywhere off of Woodward it's not really usable for that. So the public transport's not great. I'll add so, that, um, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Hannah. No, you're great. You're fine. Um, I was going to say, so like, it would be better to have a car in the city. I guess I'll, I'll piggyback off that by saying that it definitely helps. Um, I kind of wrestled with this decision before <clears throat> I started school. Ultimately, I ended up getting one. Um, Nowadays, though, there's a lot of ways I think you can kind of circumnavigate not having a vehicle. So if you're worried about like getting groceries, for example, obviously there's delivery options for that as well. Um, if you're looking for like just food in particular, like home meal kits, which I'm like, I, I'm obsessed with using like HelloFresh and things like that. They just send all the recipes or whatever to your door so you don't have to worry about like going out and shopping, which saves time, even if you have a car. Um, I'm also finding that I'm trying to bike more just because I live like a weird distance away from school, such so time to get to my car and get out of the garage and park and then walk to the building is about the same amount of time that it would take for me to just bike there. So I know that's not available for everyone. So sometimes having a vehicle is necessary for that reason. But um, I know people that don't get one until second year and even some people that don't have one now still and they make it work. So yeah, I wanna caution you from thinking that it's necessary, but it definitely makes things easier. I also okay, thank you. just want to point everyone to what Don said in the chat um, with CEC, which is like, I think I said before, like your clinical experiential clerkship, sometimes you're placed like relatively far away from the school. So having a car is definitely helpful. Um, like, like Nick said, there's some kids that don't, but like, especially when you're driving in at like 
3 or 4 a.m. for 5 a.m. for your clinical rotations. Like having a car is pretty nice. All right. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, Margaret, you can go ahead. Hello. Um, I was wondering um, about the specifics of the service learning component to your curriculum. Is it is there like a didactic component to that? Or is it mostly just like you get sort of credit for doing a service kind of extracurricular? Uh, I could take part of that one. Um, so for the service learning component, there's not really as much of a didactic session. There's going to be a couple um, like Zooms or lessons where you essentially learn how to do like a couple things, whether it's um, how to set up um, like an advanced search in PubMed or some things like that. But mostly uh, you get um, a certain number of projects that you do with your anatomy group uh, that focus on a couple different themes and uh, so in that respect, it's a lot more of like just independent. You have a couple of weeks to work on um, the project and it's a little more open-ended. Uh, the benefit of that is that um, the service learning uh, course directors will then like publish that stuff to Wayne's um, like publication system. So it counts as a publication, which is nice for residency applications and stuff. And then the other part of the service learning is how some people have alluded to the uh, clinics, you have a certain number of clinical and outreach volunteer hours you need to get each block. Um, and as you're free to fulfill that however you wish um, through Wayne State organizations, um, different clubs and clinics will have events that can count for those hours. Um, so it's not really as much like classroom lecture based. It's a little bit more of like project going out in the community based, if that answers your question. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks for your question. Uh, Dalal, that, sorry if I'm no, you said getting perfect. your name wrong. No, that is it. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for an uh, awesome session so far. My question is, have any of you participated in the scholarly concentrations program? And if so, what has your experience been like? So I guess I can take this one. Um, so I am part of the scholarly concentration. Um, and so it's essentially like from application, it's like a pretty short application of like what your research project or who your like mentor is and what you want to do. And then you basically, it's a very fluid like timeline. <laughs> um, they, I think on the website, it says anywhere between like three and 24 months. Um, and you essentially just complete a research project and then like make a poster and present it. Um, and yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty relaxed. It's not like anything like too high strung or stressful. Um, you, I, so I am part of the research elective, um, which is essentially the same thing, but you have like didactic courses and workshops where you learn how to actually do the research. Um, including like making the figures and presenting and um, yeah, and like how to analyze data. And so I thought that was helpful. And I think those two very well complement each other. I think if that answered your question. It definitely did, thank you. Thanks. Um, Tasfia. Hi, um, I hope you all are doing well. I have two really quick questions. My first one was I wanted to ask the panel of students if any of them have participated in maybe like community service projects or other types of extracurriculars at Wayne State that have helped them get more involved in the city of, in, of Detroit. And if so, like how did they feel about that experience and like connecting with the city? And then my second question is kind of a little bit more lighthearted. I signed up to go to um, a tour to like visit Wayne State. So while I'm in Detroit, I wanted to ask if anyone recommends any fun or interesting places to visit in the city. I can start off answering the first question. So I, like I said earlier, I'm in the community engagement elective, which is focused on like community service. So how it works is you get, you have like a group or a team of like four or five students and you guys work together to uh, 
uh, complete like a community service or community engagement project. And so my project is focused on uh, vaccine rates in Detroit. And what we're doing is um, we're educating like high school age students on like vaccines and immunology and things like that. And then with the goal of them going off to public schools and community events and teaching their peers about vaccines and we're trying to kind of kind of try to boost vaccine rates in the city of Detroit. And so that's been a super positive experience. I've gotten a lot of like engagement with my team. And I think it's been a really cool project to be a part of and like kind of try to see that impact on the city of Detroit. Um, and aside from that elective, there's also these numerous clinics and community volunteering projects that you can really get involved with the community on kind of more of your own individual basis without needing like a team. Thank you. Um, to add on, I actually want to add something onto that. One of, you know, one of the great things about Wayne, I think, is our you know rather extensive student body. We have one of the largest single body campuses in the country. And what that allows you to do is kind of collaborate and work with a lot of students from a variety of backgrounds to start a lot of these like community-based initiatives on your own. So one of the things that you know I was able to do is actually one of the things that we're working on with that I'm working on with an M4 is like a, a, a mentorship program for post-bac students and high school students in Detroit. So we're still working on like piloting the program and like getting it started. But it's just awesome that we're able, we have the resources and also like the human resources to do something like this, you know, without any specific like structure from either faculty or anything like that. It's very much self-motivated, um, you know, something you can do entirely on your own. It's just, if you're willing to do it, you can definitely make it happen. And Wayne has the resources, whether it be human resources or any other type of, um, you know, things that you need to do something like that. They have that available to kind of bring that idea to action. So that's something I encourage, you know, everyone to do. If you, if you want to go to Wayne, you know, take advantage of your classmates because they are extremely, extremely talented people out there. And it's, it's an amazing opportunity to be able to work with them, you know, right here. So a lot of the stuff that we do here tends to be done by students with the support of faculty and you know the long-term infrastructure that's put into place. Um, and in terms of the what in terms of uh, what you can do here, I would highly recommend going to Campus Martius. It depends when you're coming for your visit. If it's uh if it's gonna be winter and they have it all set up, there'll be an ice rink and everything and a scaling ring set up with a huge Christmas tree. Um, so that's always something really nice to check out. So I would definitely recommend that. Um, but yeah. Yeah, thank you. Just a little side note, if you are coming here for a tour, it will be the ambassadors that are helping you along with the tour or for like an official tour. I don't know if you just know a, like a student that they're taking you around, but yeah. All right. Um, thanks for your question, Tasvia. Um, Ananya, sorry if I'm... No, no, that was perfect. Um, thank you so much for hosting this session. Um, so one of my questions was with, you know, COVID-19 and everything, there was kind of this push for health policy and social justice in medicine. And so just out of curiosity, was there any courses that really stood out to you that answered those social justice and health policy questions? Or were there any opportunities that allowed students to kind of immerse themselves in that realm of medicine? I know for like, open this up. oh, sorry, go ahead, Neha. No, I was just gonna talk about the um, MPAC elective, the um, medical, I forget what it stands for. I think it's like political and um, community action, something like that. But um, I remember we just like the M1s just had our like elected meeting. And so one of their presentations was like very much focused on health policy. And like the whole goal of the program is to kind of get you like familiar with um, how policy works and how you guys can be like better advocates as a physician, as physicians as well. Um, so I feel like at Wayne, if you definitely want to like be involved with social justice, like even through the IJI committee um, that Aria was talking about earlier, um, there's a lot of ways to do that. And just to add on, I will. Oh, I apologize. Sorry, Connor. No, go ahead, Connor. Okay. Um, one of your classes first year is called P4, and it stands for Population, Patient, Physician, and Professionalism. And we meet every week. And we have a lot of discussions on social justice and social determinants of health and things like that. Um, and it really fosters great discussions with your classmates on that on those topics. And you get all sorts of viewpoints. Um, I think that's one of the best things that Wayne does with regard to that. 
I'll just add on to our AMA club does a lot of policy writing and discussions and things like that. I'm not personally involved with it, but my roommate is, and she's an M1 and she's already written like three or four like policy proposal, things like that. And that's like super up her alley. So there's ways to get involved with like the student clubs as well. If you're interested in like starting something specific or like going after a certain cause, that kind of stuff. Thank you. Thanks for your question, Ananya. Um, <clears throat> Heather, you can go ahead. Awesome, thanks guys. Thanks so much for doing this. Um, two quick questions. Uh, my first one has to do with rotation sites. Um, do you guys find like you have a home base that you do a lot of your rotations at? Um, do you move around every different block and do you have opportunities to go out of state? Um, and then my second question had to do with learning communities. Um, the, the MD houses, how often do you guys get together? Um, do you find you have faculty and peer mentors through that and your experience with that? Um, so for rotations, um, we do rotations, like the two biggest ones are Henry Ford and the Detroit Medical Center, um, but there's a couple smaller hospitals like outside of Detroit that you can possibly be placed at. Um, and it works off of like a lottery system. So you get to rank like which ones that you want to do at. And then they try to like match you based on that. But that doesn't guarantee that you'll like get the like, say, if I rank Detroit Medical Center as first, it doesn't mean that I'll necessarily get it. Um, and that will essentially be your main home base for uh, clinical rotations. I know if you do your rotations at Henry Ford, you may be sent out for like um, say your family medicine rotation, you might be sent out to some of like the outpatient clinics out in the suburbs. Um, and with regards to going out of state, I think that's more of like a fourth year thing where you do your away rotations and that's like a separate application where you would apply to that school's away rotation. I think they call it some people or some programs call it uh, like visiting students. Um, and you essentially would spend like a month there in at their school at in the specialty of your choice um and a lot of students say it's kind of like your tryout for the residency program um but yeah and i'm sorry what was the second part of your question yeah no worries uh thanks for that the second part had to do with the learning communities in the md houses yeah i can take this one so uh i'm a peer mentor in like the learning communities, MD houses, whatever they're called now. Um, so how it works is I think there's eight learning communities or houses with that divides up your class. And then within each house, there's approximately like four to five anatomy tables. So it's about 30 to 35 students. Um, and for each anatomy table, or I'm sorry, there are two anatomy tables get partnered with an upperclassman. So it'll be about like 10 to 12 students get partnered with a second year um, and they act as like your peer mentor. So any questions about school, Detroit, like any questions that you have about literally anything, they're kind of your like go to resource for. So it's kind of a built in mentorship program there. And then there's also opportunities to interact with faculty and all the other things that you said. So it's a really cool way to break up kind of such a, a huge class because it is so hard to meet a lot of the people into like smaller groups where you kind of have pre-made like interactions and relationships and things like that. So it is a good way. And then you also have that upper class and resources as well. And then just to add on to like sort of what they do, um, it kind of ranges like, like he was saying, like a lot of it is just like, if you have a question or you need advice or something like that, you can reach out to your mentors, but they also host like organized events. Like my learning community just went to a cider mill and had like a bonfire or we've done like trivia nights and stuff like that. And so it's kind of a nice way to like get away from school and just hang out like socially, but still like have access to like sort of an in, like in your community and stuff like that. And then you'll notice too, a lot of times the learning communities will like partner up. So you'll have like two two houses or two colors and stuff will like go and do big stuff. So it's really fun. Awesome, thanks guys. All right, Fabi. Hello, thank you guys for hosting this event. Um, I had a question regarding gap years and such. Um, I personally took a couple gap years. Is there anything that you guys would 
um, that you guys found helpful trying to get into the groove of things once you were admitted and um, started again as a student? Um, I can take this one. Uh, so I took one gap year, not quite as many as you, but something that the school does that's really nice is part of uh, the curriculum when you start and your orientation week is actually all about how to study in medical school. And they have really good uh, services at the school that will teach you how it's done by most of the students. Um, it includes videos you can watch, um, things to read that'll help you adjust because it is a bit different than how you would do it in undergrad, um, and it takes a little bit of adjustment. One thing I just want to add, like, um, like aside from applications, once you are admitted, um, I would recommend not trying to study and like get ahead of the curriculum because it's very much like drinking out of like a fire hydrant. Like, um, there's just no way to do all of that information even before you start medical school. So I would suggest you take that time for yourself and enjoy the time you have before you start your actual actual curriculum. As far as like getting in the groove of school too, um, I personally didn't take gap years, but I'll speak for myself in saying that the way that I study now is completely different from the way that I studied in undergrad. So it wasn't like I had to get back into the groove of like what undergrad was like it was just a whole new world and pretty much everyone's trying to figure it out regardless of if they took a break between um you know doing their bachelors and, and coming to medical school so i don't know if, if that kind of helps in um answering that question but it's like a learning experience for everyone basically yes that helped a lot thank you um michelle you can go ahead Hey guys, thank you so much for hosting this. Um, so my question was that being a, like having a larger student body compared to other medical schools, does Wayne State have opportunities to work um, in like smaller, like more collaborative groups and settings? Yeah, I'll jump in really quickly and say that this has been one of my favorite parts of, of the school by far. So like Jack was talking about earlier, when you start your first year, you get paired up with, I think it's always five, but sometimes the numbers might be out, but like five other people for your anatomy table. Um, so you work together with those people at the very least twice a week, oftentimes more during your first year, either doing anatomy dissections or just um, like other things like P4, like Connor was talking about. Um, but those you know, five other people and the two other people that you end up dissecting with, you end up spending a whole lot of time with them. Um, it's a really, really great opportunity, I think, to just get to know some of your other fellow classmates and then you meet some of their friends and, and so on and so forth. But there's definitely small group opportunities. It's a really great way to just kind of get like a, you know, a social home base, as it were. And I found that I, I don't feel overwhelmed by the number of people. I'm just excited to meet new people because you do it more often than you think too, so. Yeah, and then also there's quite literally a student org for anything and everything you can imagine here at Wayne, which is another really great way to work in like a small group setting. And if there isn't an org for something that you wanna do, you can easily, easily start one, which is what, you know, Nick and I started the CT search cardiothoracic group when we were M1s and, you know, we've been becoming great friends because of that and working on something together. And it's a pretty small group. It's like four, three or four of us that work together towards that. And we do a variety of like suture clinics and things like that to, to work on and meet other students as well from not just M2s, but M1s, M3s, M4s, like from a variety of people from the school. So the student orgs here are a great way to get involved in like a more small intergroup setting. And if you don't see one that kind of appeals to you, I highly recommend starting one because it's very, very easy here. And it's, it's highly encouraged because it's one of the great parts of being part of such a um, large uh, student body. Michelle, did, did I get everything? Yep, thank you so much. Thanks for your question. Um, Christian, you can go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, thank you so much for answering these questions. I just, I was wondering, um, 
Was there a lot of opportunities to get involved uh, in research as a student at uh, Wayne State? Uh, did you say research? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can chip in um, this one. Um, there's a lot. There's a uh, so some people have mentioned kind of being involved in the research elective, which is one way. Uh, in other ways, most of a lot of the clinics um, have like some sort of a research position that you can apply to and like you could be on the board of the clinic so you get more exposure with the clinic, but you can also work on research projects through that group. Um, another way and the way that I got involved in mine is it's very easy to kind of just reach out to faculty, um, whether at Wayne State or associated faculty at the hospitals and ask if they have research projects going on and get involved. Uh, cause that was something I was a little bit concerned with cause I didn't have any undergraduate research experience, but Wayne does a really good job of bringing in, uh, different people from different specialties and areas of medicine to kind of, you know, give discussions to the class, to the students about, you know, what's this specialty like, and that's a great way to kind of listen to some people and see who would you want to work with, um, what kind of specialties or research are you interested in doing? And then from there, it's, uh, you have a lot more authority when your email address says med dot wayne dot edu and instead of just your undergrad uh email address so it might take a couple of tries but there's a lot of um people that are available to help with that and your counselors can also help set you up um with research mentors through interest groups and things like that and just to give you a little bit more information about the research elective during your first year and i think it um it becomes available for applications like after your first segment so uh, they also host like networking events where they have like specified physicians and different specialties come in and give a presentation about the kinds and types of research and like what you would specifically be doing. Um, so you can find easily find mentors through that. Um, I personally didn't, I just like left, uh, left here, he said, just cold called, um, and cold emailed people on LinkedIn. And all of the physicians down here are like very, very welcoming, very, very open to having students on the research team and do everything um, you can for them. So, yeah. If I can sum up whether or not you should decide to do the research elective or not, it would just be if you've got more experience in research, you kind of know what you're doing, you know what you want to do, then I would suggest just going the cold calling route because um, the research elective involves some like teaching of how to do research and some assignments along with that. So if you want to just cold call, that's fine. Research Collective will just make it a little bit easier for you to find people, but you will also have to do some other work along the way. And you might feel like your hands getting held if you already have a lot of research experience. So that's the best way I can describe that. Thank you so much. Um, Matthew, you can go ahead. Yeah, thank you guys for uh, answering our questions. So I noticed in your introductions, many of you guys said that you were involved in an interest group. Uh, could you guys explain a little bit more about that? Do you, oh, do you want us there... to describe? Sorry, Aria, go ahead. No, 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 finish. No, go ahead. Ask you, you're gonna ask. Would you like us to describe like our individual interest groups or just the idea of interest groups in general? Right, yeah, so just the idea of interest groups in general and how they work and uh, what's going on. Yeah, so there's quite a lot of interest groups. Like, I mean, the way they work, it really depends on how it's run. But a lot of the times what generally they'll have speakers come in, whether it be like a physician that's currently in the field of interest. So like, let's say for dermatology interest group, you might have a dermatologist come in, talk about what it's like to be a dermatologist, what kind of research, if they did anything, and like different advice from different parts of the career of becoming one. Um, and another thing, you know, for let's say it's a procedural interest group, they might hold like suture clinics, they might have opportunities to do research and networking. So a lot of the purpose or uh, the reason for interest groups is, exist is kind of facilitate the whole learning process for that specific specialty. So for surgery, it's obviously important to make sure that you know what it's like to be a surgeon, whether it be doing the surgical stuff, the procedural stuff, or even doing research. And a lot of the times that requires some sort of faculty advisors. So it's a really great way to have a structured environment to meet faculty advisors through an interest group. So I know a lot of the times people are more likely to, you know, speakers are more likely to come to an interest group if they know it's already established and a student already here at Wayne. So 
it's just one of the ways I guess students can kind of learn more about that specific specialty and also a way to network within the specialty and kind of learn more what it's like um, to be that type of doctor. So it's just a really great way to get more experience um, and kind of figure out what you want to do. One thing I will add on is you don't necessarily need to be committed to that specialty or even be in that interest group to attend the events. So you can sort of shop around and, and see which events are going on and, and see who you might be interested in and, and kind of go from there and, and decide if you're not sure on which specialty you're interested in yet. Hopefully that answered your question, Matthew. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Helen, you can go ahead. Hi, all. Um, I was interested in how your guys' specific experience with Detroit patients, with Michigan patients, is going to set you guys up for success. As in, what have you learned that was really specific to this area? What is interesting and special about these patients, and why are you so excited to be working with them? Um, I guess I can start here. Um, first off, the, the main thing that I want to say is like Detroit is a very, very diverse population. Um, and you will see like probably the, one of the widest range of, um, you know, disease and um, healthcare gaps um, probably in the country. Um, so for example, if you're working at the DMC, you'll see a lot of, you know, underprivileged and possibly homeless um, patient populations. But if you're working out in the suburbs, like one of the Henry Ford, Henry Ford clinics, um, you'll see a lot more, you know, long-term disease um, and, and um, more privileged areas. So you get to see kind of both ends of the spectrum of kind of what you're, what you're going to see in your daily life as a physician. Um, another thing that I like about um, like Detroit specifically is, well, we do some shadowing and some rotations at the DMC and it's very, very fast paced. It's very, very fast learning. Um, and a lot of times you're the patient or like the hospitals require you to do like um, individual stuff. Uh, sorry if I'm not making a lot of sense, but like do a lot of procedures and stuff on your own for learning opportunities. Um, and so you're getting to talk to these patients one-on-one -on -one without an attending or a resident kind of like watching over you. And you get to learn, I think the best just from doing these procedures and talking to these patients on your own. Um, hopefully if that answered your question, but I can, right, I can add on to that. To yeah, I can add on to that as well. So like Nico said, you know, being a part of an urban center, you see a pretty wide spectrum of patients. And one of the things that you'll see a lot of Detroit is kind of that intersectionality between how someone's socioeconomic status can affect their health and then vice versa. So what I mean by that is a lot of the patients you'll see, they might not have easy access to a lot of things that we take advantage for advantage of, which is, you know, shelter, access to clean and healthy uh, food options. Um, you know, like Jack had mentioned earlier, Whole Foods is kind of like the only walkable food option in Midtown, which is unfortunate because it's a rather expensive option. And for a lot of these patients, they don't have easy access to grocery stores. They don't have easy access to transportation. And then you'll see in the clinic how like some of these patients complain, like I literally can't make it to my, my visit because of this, or they miss visits because they don't have transportation. And you see how as a physician, you can kind of help mitigate or remediate that by saying like, okay, if you have access this time, you know, I, one time I see a C provider was like, okay, can we figure out a pharmacy that does delivery services for you? So we found a pharmacy that does a delivery service and they were able to get medication delivered to their home instead of trying to figure out how to get to the pharmacy. So it's, it's a very, very important experience for, you know, people who are willing and, you know, who want to serve these specific type of populations, because it makes you consider more than just, you know, the clinical diagnosis and management of that very acute uh, issue. Um, and it forces you to kind of reconcile, like, how do these social aspects of someone's life impact their, their medical experience? And how as physicians can we intervene and help manage that very important aspect? 
Um, so that was one ex example that kind of came to my mind. But you'll see that we'll see that more and rotations. You know, unfortunately, we're only M2, so we don't we can't speak too much about rotations. But I'm 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 sure guaranteed, considering that DMC is a level one trauma center, meaning they will take care of every type of patient for every type of interest or um, injury we'll see more of those patients in M3. So that's something to look forward to and something that I'm looking forward to in particular um, is kind of learning more about like the intersectionality of social health um, and, you know, physical health and seeing how as physicians we can help um, kind of foster that in our long-term care. Hopefully that answers And sorry to interrupt, like, but do you feel like the tools that you've learned so far are going to help you meet those challenges? So in... You know, it's hard because I think it's really hard to replicate those tools in like a very formal classroom setting. So that's why I, I always say this for anyone that's interested in Wayne, like you really, really need to put yourself out there. And like the way I learned the most was actually being a part of these free clinics, um, going out there and actually seeing patients as an M1 and kind of taking note of like, oh, okay, these are like actual problems that people are facing that you might, you learn about in the classroom, but you don't really learn about how they manifest in the real world. And the only way for you to really understand that is to go out there and just start learning from other people who are doing it themselves. So yes and no. And the yes to that is like student orgs and like different volunteering opportunities will allow me to learn that. Um, and obviously it helps to have like a very solid educational background, like we'd learn in the classroom, but nothing's going to map one-to-one, -one, like going out there and doing it yourself. But um, as an M1 and M2, I, I definitely think I'm getting more and more skills and I feel a lot more comfortable now, at least thinking about those things before I enter a patient's room um, than I did when I first got to school. And just to add on to that, um, like when you do eventually do, when we do those third and fourth year rotations, we will again, get that exposure, get that experience, all of these and learn all these schools, their skills and tools that we need to be successful when we move on to residency, wherever that may be. I had a physician tell me when in my first year, he's like, if you're able to like be successful and thrive in your rotations in like DMC or Henry IV or any of these hospitals, like you'll be fine anywhere in the country you go. You might not see all of the issues. You might not be able to know how to manage all of the issues like specifically, but you'll have the skills and the tools to be able to figure out how to do it when the time arises. So you can go anywhere else in the country and like be able to be a star in your residency and all of those things as well. So it really does give you that experience that you need. Um, in your preclinical years or your pre-residency years, I guess. Hopefully we answered all your questions, Helen. Thank you. All right, Lorraine. Hi, um, thank you for this session. Um, during the introductions, I think some of you mentioned that yeah, you went to undergrad in Michigan. Uh, I was wondering if, what would you say would be a unique and unexpected aspect of Michigan that uh, you found yourself to enjoy and love and learn more about? Do you mean like Michigan as a whole or like Detroit? Um, or Michigan both. as a whole? M Michigan okay. as a whole in general and specifically Detroit. Um, so I guess I can start off here. So I, I went to undergrad at the University of Michigan, but I am from like probably four hours north of here. So kind of by the Mackinac Bridge, if you guys are familiar with Michigan geography. Um, but one thing that I would recommend, and I know that a lot of students have done, is like take take a weekend and kind of visit some of the more scenic places in Michigan specifically the the UP or Upper Peninsula if you guys aren't from Michigan um, and like Mackinac Islands, um, Pictured Rocks. There's a really great like hiking and camping places up there that is definitely worth checking out. Um, for Detroit specifically, some of the great things that I've um, noticed down here are the, the restaurants, I guess, specifically. I don't get a lot of restaurants up in rural Michigan, but um, being in an urban environment is definitely a big change, um, at least for me, and something that I just kind of fell in love with. Um, outside of Detroit, like just slightly outside of Detroit, um, things that you can go and like, there's great towns and like cities like Ann Arbor, um, if you wanna go visit the University of Michigan is great. There's a lot of sporting events down here. Um, I think someone put in the chat that 
Detroit's four sports teams all have their like center, um, like within a mile of each other and being able to like, just walk to each one of those is a really great experience. Um, and if you're looking for more like scenic stuff within Detroit Belle Isle, I think someone also pointed out was a really great place to go and check out. There's also a lot of concerts here. So I know me and some of my friends in M1 um, went to like the Lil Nas concert and stuff. So um, along with that, like Comerica Park and everything is so close to Midtown where a lot of students do end up living. Um, so there's like a lot to do here. Hopefully that answered your question, Lorraine. Or is there something else that you were looking for? No, uh, oh, you answered it perfectly. Thank you so much. All right. I think we have time for one more question. So, Nikechi, sorry if I'm butchering your name. Hello. No, you didn't. Good, good, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Nikechi. I'm calling or. Yeah, from Missouri. I'm a post -back, um candidate. I had a question about the curriculum. Um, I know you guys have a three-year MD track. I wanted to know if any one of any one of you guys are participating in the program. What residency or what um, specialty you're interested in pursuing? How are you experiencing the three-year track? Does it feel overwhelming or it feels okay? And then my second question is. Um, does Wayne State have a SNMA um, organization? So that's an organization geared towards um, African American people of color or minorities in healthcare. Thank you. I don't know if any of the M1s are in the three-year track. So that that's a relatively new program. So it was only offered to the M1s. So the M2s um, don't really know much about it. But I don't know if one of the I M1s can, here. I can I have a little bit more insight into that because so the three-year track it was it was created kind of to to target specifically people who are already kind of in the medical field whether it be as like an other position whether it be a PA or nurse or NP but um I don't think any of the students are currently in it because I know the last time we had talked about it I, I remember there was a meeting with the dean that I attended a couple months ago where he mentioned just kind of working on that and kind of re, uh, what is it? What is the right word I'm looking for? Kind of reforming it a little bit more because they wanted to make sure they had residency spots available for everyone that's in it because it's a little bit more of an accelerated track. But um, unfortunately, I don't know if anyone's in it right now. I don't know if any of the admin can talk about that particularly. So I can't give you a little bit more insight to that. But don't put in the chat that the it began last year and none okay. of the students here. All yeah. Right. So, so I, maybe by the time you 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 guys will apply, it'll be there. Um, but in terms of SNMA, I don't. I can't remember if we have a chapter here, but we have a BMA, which is the Black Medical Association here. So we have a chapter here that, unfortunately, I don't think any of us are a part of, and I don't can't speak to it too well. But I know it's a very very um, popular association, and they do a lot of different um, outreach. Uh, within the community. Um, they're actually in charge of planning a lot of the large scale events too and doing fundraising and kind of help giving back to the community in a, in a variety of ways. Um, uh, unfortunately, I can't give you a little bit more information, but if you are interested, um, I can give you my email and I have a few of my friends that are on the board for that. So I can message you privately or put it in the chat or whatever, and I can give you some more information or people to contact who have more information on that. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. We do have an office of, um, it's it's got a new title, so I'm going to try to get it correct for you. It's Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Access, um, the Office of IDEA. Um, and they work with any students who might fit into any of those categories. Um, Miss Deborah Holland is one of the advisors there. Um, I know she works with the MAPS organization on main campus. So I'm not, I don't believe there's officially an SNMA chapter, but they do go to all those events. I hope that helps. 
we can get you that contact information as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right. I think that is all of the time that we have for today. Um, I apologize if you send in a question and we weren't able to get to it, but um, some of our, or I guess panelists, if you want, you can throw your email in the chat um, and always feel free to anyone who's just attending to reach out and um, hopefully we can answer your questions over there. Also, we just um, started a Discord chat um, for anyone who knows how to use Discord. Um, and on there, we always have ambassadors kind of filtering in and out, always ready to answer questions. Um, we'll host some events there too um, in the future. So yeah, and I'm not sure where you can find the link, but I, I think Don or Rachel will send that out soon. But yeah, thank you guys for coming. We'll leave it just a little bit more time if you guys want to take down the emails. All right, thanks panelists. Um, you are released now, <laughs> except for the uh, the new board. You guys are switching over to the other one, the other Zoom. <laughs>